All right, guys, welcome to another TPO fly of the month. This is also going to be a tip. Uh, the last fly that we tied, we used the Mark Pettijohn magic tool. Now, we didn't really give you an explanation as to how it works. We just showed you the magic of the magic tool. But in this month's fly, we're not only going to tie using the magic tool again, but we're going to show you how to use it. So if you look here, here's the components of the magic tool. We have the clip that holds the CDC. We have the other clip that grabs the CDC and allows us to insert it in the loop that we create when we use the hook point to make the loop and the thread in which we insert this in, let go, and then spin the thread. So here, if you look, I have the perfect length CDC for this application. I have the perfect length. You don't want to use a short one, you don't want to use a long one, but what you want to do is you want to splay out all the plumes so they're straight out like that. Okay. Now the next one here, you're going to do the same thing. All right. So there, so we're going to match them up. Perfect. Now, we're going to take this, all right? Here comes the cool part. We're going to hold the stems right next to each other and we're going to insert them in the tool and you're going to see they come straight up. The next thing that we're going to do here is we're going to take our scissors, we're going to cut one side, we're going to turn it, and we're going to cut the other side. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the clip that grabs the CDC and we're going to grab the CDC as close as we can to the edge. All right. Now, I'm going to take my thumb and my index finger, my point, well, my middle finger here, and I'm going to let go and I'm going to pull this out. Now, the only thing left to do in preparation to tie this fly is to cut the stem. So here I'm going to cut the stem. Okay. Now, I'm ready. Now, we're going to start tying the fly here. So for this fly, I'm going to take a light wire scud hook, insert it in the vise, okay? For my thread, I'm going to use 70 UTC in olive, okay? This is a size 16. That's about the size of the average bluing olive that's hatching on our streams right now. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make my parachute post. If you look here, in every bag of CDC, there's multiple different kinds of feathers. These are the ones that are really, really fat. They're really, really bulky. These are the ones that are great for making parachutes. So here I'm going to line them right up. I'm going to get all the tips the same size. And I'm going to insert them on top of the hook. I'm going to make a loose wrap. Now I'm going to make a tight wrap. Okay. Now, like I always say, whenever you clip the materials, you take your scissors and you trim forward. I don't want to break the thread. There we go. Perfect. Now, what that's going to allow me to do is when I make my thread wraps, it's going to create a nice even taper. You can see that. I've created a nice even taper between where I tied it in to the rest of the hook shank. And now I'll just lift it up just to make sure that it's in the right spot. This I went a little bit too forward, so I'll push it back with my fingers. And now you see I have more steel in front of the hook guy so that I can tie my parachute. So, now I'm going to make this one an emerger. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take Zelon, all right, for the shuck, as if the nymph shuck is still holding off the back. It could be a cripple. So I'm only going to take five strands. Contrary to popular belief, when you tie in the shuck for the emerger, you don't want to have it too bulky because the real nymphs, when they're hanging off the back, the real shucks, they're very translucent, which means that fish can see them, but light goes through them. So if you take, you know, 10, 
15 pieces of Zelon, it doesn't look real. It's an obvious alarm that your fly is not real and it tells fish, you know, not to take it. So here, if you look, we're going to tie in, this is a buy it, a quill, it's a quill. So here, we're going to go back to the rear end of the hook. Now we're going to go all the way back to the thorax. Now when I wrap this, you're going to see that this is going to have a very slender body, which is what all mayflies have. So here, I'm going to take it. Well, the first thing, I don't want to forget this. Let's put super glue on it because this makes the fly durable. And durability is very important because on this one, you're going to catch a lot of fish. So here, let me get some of that glue out on my fingers. There. Now, I'm going to take the quill and I'm going to start wrapping it up the hook shank. And if you look, I have a very nice, even, segmented body. Okay. Now I'm here. Now I'm going to tie this off. Bang. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take bluing olive, super fine dubbing. And I'm going to dub a thorax. And that's also going to do two things. It's going to stand up that CDC post. All right. And it's going to give me the bulk that I need to make it look like a natural insect, to give me the taper that the natural insects have. So here, so I'm going to pull this back, I'm going to go in front of it, I'm going to wind up in front. Now, here we go, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the post up and I'm going to make a few thread wraps right there. And if you look, that's keeping the post up. Okay, now, before I split the thread, like I said with the last one, the secret is you don't want to have the thread when you come up, you don't want to have the thread cut into the thorax to make it look like it's two. So I'm going to put thread right up in there, all right? Now, I'm going to take my hook, and this is the hardest part of the fly, and I'm going to try to get my hook right in the middle of the thread, here we go, and I'm going to split the thread. You can use a pin, you can use a needle, I just have a lot of fish hooks, so that's what I choose to use. So if you look here, I split the thread. Right, so now, as you see, I finally split the thread, only a couple minutes later. Now here, I'm going to take the clip, and I'm going to insert it in the loop. I'm going to pull down and I'm going to let go. If you look, it holds it in place. Now, since this is a smaller fly, I don't need hackle that's that long. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to trim. Okay? Now, I'm going to spin it. And the key to getting this right is you don't want to have this bobbin like moving all over the place. You want to rest it in your finger and you want to keep on spinning it until it's all over the place and it looks like a staircase almost. Like here, it's starting to get right. If you look, it looks like a staircase. See that? We're getting there. So now, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to go over once, I'm going to go over twice, now I'm going to take this and I'm going to wrap it parallel to the top of the hook shank. And there's my CDC hackle. Very, very easy. I'm going to tighten up on it and I'm going to wrap it again. I'm going to come around one more time. Now. Before you finish, I'm going to take this, 
I'm going to lift it, and if you look, I have plenty of room on the eye of the hook to finish the fly. So I lifted that. Now I'm going to pull out some additional thread. I'm going to pull this back, and I'm going to attempt to do a whip finish. So here I'm going to come, hold this back, I'm going to go once, I'm going to go twice, three times, and I'm going to pull it. The only problem here is that since the thread was twisted when I made the dubbing loop, sometimes I have a little bit tough time with the whip finish because of the twist in the thread. So here, I'm just going to put two whip finishes in. I'm going to pull on it. All right, thread breaks. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this. All right, I'm going to look. Now here, you know, we know that not, not, you know, blueing olives this size, they don't have such massive wings. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to trim the wing to the size of the natural. And you can look here. And you can see that the CDC, when I turn it over, creates almost that lifelike quality that you see. Like, not, not all nymphs, I mean, not all mayflies, they're floating down the stream and they're just drifting there, you know, waiting for a fish to take it. They're moving, they're pulsating, and the CDC does exactly that. And uh, that's why CDC flies are so deadly. So, I hope you guys like this one. Um, I hope you enjoyed the demo. It, it, you know, it, it is a product that you should get because you can make some really, really beautiful flies with it. So, good luck with this fly in the next upcoming weeks, and thanks for watching.